Supreme is the highest degree of the quality where you can pursue. And what is S stands for? Many people ask me, what is S? Chill, smart, sustainability, SAE. Well, I think in many of our I will use many of the different meaning S, but today I would like to add S as a school. We are pursuing different quality level of the school, which is next generation and next version of the university, where this will bloom the new leaders who will change the world, but who will not belong to the current, you know, existing incumbent leadership, but who will reform. And that's why this self-loving and self-sustainable you know, and also self-development schooling is necessary. The new discipline we're pursuing in this smart campus of such kind of self-discipline and, you know, and creative study, conversion study, and also smart city study, smart farming, high-tech education. These are all self-initiated because that will probably challenge the existing human education. But without such changes, there's no future for the new leadership. And the secondly, the should be as is not only the school, school has uh, these great, great S staff member, student, the scholar. All of them have in a very, very good service mind what we so call servant leadership. Today, I'd like to inter you know, uh, uh, introduce you to one of the, the excellent servant leaders, including our welcoming speaker, Professor Owanso, and also our speaker, Kim Yong-Ban Kim jong -Han. If you hear from here, there are, you know, the, 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 their story, life is story, you will see what I say from the circuit. Most of them have been working for, not only for their profession, but you know, working for the global community as a servant. And one story I'd like to tell your man, uh, you know, Paul, your man, Tim, not only he's a engineer, he has been nurturing our students with the learning, with the internship, without, with additional scholarship, with additional grace of his blessing. I haven't found for less than 17 years the owners actually decided on this one first stop, but I will receive the world behind me. It's a, such a big cost for Korean community to spend their time, professional time, for the interview people, especially foreign people, to living in their very spacious place and working with them one month, two months, and giving another opportunity. It's a great cost. But probably for those who have done SRS, probably you see the seven leadership. Not only his, his brother, right? Young Jen, how such a sir? That would be for bringing the back to his house. So please uh, give him a you know, great regard, you know, when you know he's making his speech. But I want you to join me to give a big you know big boss to the your key for this moment. <laughs> but secondly, Dr. Kijoba is another place. After he you know, come back to Silicon Valley, back to Korea, it's a concern for our community, especially to make Korea community for serving the developing countries, uh, for the benefit of the developing countries, not the one that makes old stuff, but state of art and innovation stuff to be delivered to, to developing countries. He has been actually, you know, overcoming all these identical you know, structure, which is obscure. You know, you have to pursue innovation, but you are under the public organization. This challenge with the government and he made may do. They want to pull about this in mean, one of the leading, leading promoting organization for the global. I think 
think Jung Kook has a great, great heart to share such innovation and smartness and prosperity with the rest of the world. I would say that is all. So I think that makes me also Jung Kook as you know, respected him a lot as a, as a profession, as a scholar, as a philosopher, who has a field with God. I believe you know, he and I, or we, will actually do more also to make a you know, global vision of this one. And you will hear from his witness about the globalization of Korea and future, and how we can do together in the global community. And I also would like to invite you to you know, join me to congratulate and also thanking John Gott for his coming as a new speaker. <laughs> Well, uh, the last but not the least, uh, we are all, we are all so special. So, Shibir SS is finally in Korea. S in Korea is not only Seoul Dae, but Sarang. Sarang, and also similar to Sarang. Our innovation is for the love of, you know, for the love of man. And Korean has in you know, our know, education has been in you know, love on such love. Without love, education means nothing. But we know how professional exercise is love. We know. Rational is not different from mind. And logic is not different from the sense. That is our our understanding. I think for the rest of the you know, day and for the rest of the spring as stands, I believe such love and also the man, Saram and Saram, we feel. I think your great honorable attendance today will make this as starting today. Thank you very much for all your uh, attendance today. I hope you enjoy our first spring as seminar. I hope also you enjoy our second, also the, our first in you know, a performance with a new job that we created, Still Well. Still Well, I introduce to you. It's a new job, you know, like a bossy. And Still Well is Still Well, right? Dedicated still for the building. And oh, that is what we call Still Well. And Still Well is a performance as performing art in those Still Well. well uh, which will has a meaning of connecting the, the flow, connecting different organizations, connecting different in the study, connecting different schools, connecting different people, and diversity finally will be first. And diversity finally will be unified with the law and with the man Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to welcome everybody in this room and worldwide. Uh, actually, I was quite uh, curious about the meaning of S. Every time I ask my staff, they don't know. <laughs> uh, and I uh, finally uh, could understand the meaning of S. And I hope it includes smart school, smart city, smart nation, and also smart board. And I hope all of those smart things happen in this Seoul National University here on campus, and I will make it. And I need your help. All of us uh, will make those things happen in the new campus. First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, today's first spring as a seminar. Something first is the hardest thing to achieve and finally becomes the most important origin in the history of human beings. And the people remember and cherish the first thing. 
to create and make the first thing, we need to invest incredible amount of time and energy. Professor Huang and all in this seminar made it happen. I hope the Supreme Seminar made people understand how we can survive in this pandemic world and eventually succeed and prosper in an emerging world. New science and technology that we will talk in this seminar will make a small step for the human endeavor or coexistence of the global community. Let's seriously debate and discuss what we can do to live smart in this ever-changing global society. COVID-19 is changing people's life and global business. I do think COVID-19 will accelerate digital transformation in the mid and short term. Digital and online activity becomes a new norm of our life. There are 60 million knowledge workers in the US and 2 to 3% were working from home. I imagine that number has grown significantly. We all live in the unprecedented digital transforming world. Digital transformation is the process of using digital technology to create new or modify existing human life, way of experience, business processes, and most importantly, culture. I hope today's two presentation sessions and special guest address will inspire fascinating insight and innovation. Innovation comes from new thinking, and new thinking comes from connecting ideas and people like in this center. I hope all of you enjoyed the, uh, today's uh, great seminar, and spring as seminar will prosper forever. Thank you. Sense and Sensibility. It was uh, borrowed from the famous novel by Jane Austen, uh, 19th centuries. That there is a meaning, reason why I use the Sense and the Sensibility. And then uh, your subtitle is Beyond Detection. What did I wish? <laughs> it's okay. Uh, actually, it is my honor to be the uh, first speaker of this great place, and then uh, uh, from now it will prosper forever. Uh, this is a book written by the Jane Austen, and then according to the uh, Oxford, sense means an understanding about something, an ability to judge something more. It's more like a rational than the emotional. The uh, sensibility part covers the irrational portion of the, uh, the book. I think we need a, a kind of balance between sense and the sensibility. First, let me uh, introduce my company, our company, Smart Radar System. We were founded three years ago as a Smart Radar System. And then over the two uh, CES, Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, we first announced our uh, 4D image radar, followed by a LiDAR-like performance uh, for the user radar this year. 
thanks to the achievement of the uh, microwave imaging, last year, uh, September, we got a, a Prime Minister's awards from the Korean government in the uh, 2019 Radio Broadcasting Technology Award. Uh, uh, presidential uh, prize went to Samsung Electronics because of their 5G model. I wasn't able to beat that, but still, it was a great honor to be nominated as a Prime Minister's Award. And then uh, last year, we closed a Series A funding. You know, closing funding as a startup is very important. And then, uh, even though we are enduring very severe COVID-19 situation, somehow we made a, a kind of great successes from uh, many uh, aspects. First of all, uh, we were selected by the Ministry of Science and Technology as a future uh, unicorn company. It was followed by uh, the Ministry of SMEs and the startup as a, a baby unicorn company. I don't know what the future unicorn company and then the baby unicorn company means uh, we have a high probability of being a unicorn company in the, in the world, down the road. And then uh, June, uh, about a month ago, uh, we got uh, awarded by a major uh, automotive, uh, autonomous uh, uh, the bigger company in the United States. I cannot talk about the name because we are still under NDA, but you will know that. And then uh, we are supplying uh, our in-cabin solution to uh, their uh, 2,000 tonnium model cars. And then the success was followed by another uh, success of uh, supplying 100,000 units of radar systems to elderly people to monitor their behavior and then to monitor their activities. It's to save their lives during the harsh times. Thanks to all the achievement, we're gonna close our uh, CDD funding led by the SPOT, which is a Japanese uh, adventure character, whose LP consists of the Toyota Motors and the Denso, Mitsubishi, all the big companies in the uh, Japan. Also, the Hemi uh, is a, a kind of adventure capital located in Silicon Valley. This is about the uh, smart weather system, and then this is about me. I was educated uh, at the uh, Seoul National University on the Dr. I'm going to use a uh, teaching. Uh, he was uh, still handsome. At that time, he was a more handsome, I guess. <laughs> and then uh, I got my PhD from the University of Texas, Austin, and I went to Silicon Valley, like uh, Dr. Kim did. I spent uh, many years working for Cisco Systems and the AKT lab before I came back to Korea to join as an uh, executive member. Uh, inside uh, LG, I worked for LG Electronics, the holding company, and then other uh, subsidiaries of the LG as an executive member. And then 2018, I joined the Smart Weather System as a CEO. Uh, you know, basically, uh, I'm thinking that I'm leaving all the Pacific Ocean between Seoul and then San Francisco, for instance. San Francisco, I still have my house, which is where my daughter lives in. <laughs> Because of the COVID-19, I wasn't able to travel for the last uh, many months. So my daughter actually keeps on my house. Then, uh, this is a uh, kind of chart you know, like the stock of the Cisco systems. I don't know uh, how many of you know about the Cisco, but uh, during year 2000, Cisco was the most valuable company in the world. Believe or not like the Apple today. And then that time, the market capitalization was about 600 US dollars. So inside the Cisco, we had a joke. Sooner or later, we're going to use a Cisco stock to replace the dollars <laughs> and then purchase of the goods. Then the bubble burst, the stock went down. Uh, luckily, I sold some of my stock at the height of the uh, peak at the $81. So, People thought it was a kind of a great <laughs> in, in, in start investment. I'm thinking about this. Back 20 years ago, uh, I just uh, before the, the lecture, I had a, a little chat with uh, Dr. Yoon about you know, you know how 20 years went by and because we share the same background. 20 years ago, uh, March 2000. 
Cisco systems was ranked the fourth. One time was ranked the fourth. And if you look at the top 10 of the companies, except Microsoft, all the companies are gone. And today, Apple is number one as of uh, yesterday, followed by Microsoft. In 2000, year 2000, uh, we had a church member who used to work for IBM and worked for Netscape. And then Netscape was attacked by Microsoft, so he was pushed out of Netscape. So temporarily, he was jobless. So one day, uh, we had a dinner uh, with their family members, and then uh, asked him, you know, what do you want to do uh, after that? Because at that time, me and my friend were working for Cisco at the height of the stock, so we were so proud of Cisco. And then uh, our church member said, uh, yeah, I started working for a small company. And then we asked him, don't be shy. Please name your company. Ah, no, no, it's just such a small company. Don't be shy. Please name your company. So they, yeah, it's, it's called Google. <laughs> <laughs> they think, what? Google? Yeah, you know, I thought this was on the search engines that you could do very well. And then you start working for another search engine company. Mm, OK, good luck. Wish you good luck. But after four years, he made a lot of money and then quit Google and then went to China as a missionary. <laughs> Somehow, I was so much into telecommunication and networking, I didn't see what's coming down the road. I didn't see Google or nor Apple or other companies at all. On top of that, nowadays, Dr. Hans learned the Tesla is rising. <laughs> I know he bought a lot of stuff uh, Tesla. So now what? Uh, I see uh, uh, there's a time uh, before Tesla and then after Tesla. So even before Tesla, we are talking about all autonomous driving or drivers of driving. But it was being talked as early as in 1939 in uh, GM Futurama, where at the bottom there is an artificial world, and then on top people were looking at it, and then the world was moving. And then every road has a kind of like a charger system. So it was perfect, like we envision today. And then next video explains how GM was trying to achieve the driver's car in the 1950s. Cars drive themselves. Well, almost as long as they're big cars. This article about a remote control car is from 1925. But it's in the 50s that the race to develop a truly autonomous vehicle really gets going. In 1956, GM unveils a futuristic concept car called the Firebird 2, but it's not the Firebird you know. It looks kind of like a fighter jet, and it's controlled by a magnetic strip that is in the road. GM envisions the driverless future so wonderful, families literally say that. Take your time, boy. Take your time, boy. In 1958, GM teams up with RCA to develop a driverless car that uses radio frequency to smoke. It actually works, and the cars are supposed to be commercialized by 1975, but that, of course, doesn't happen. So what he was saying is that in 1958, people were expecting to have a driverless car by 1975. It still didn't happen. Why, why now we are living 2020 and we are talking about autonomous vehicle? I don't know when it's going to happen. So even uh, after Tesla, Tesla, I don't know why Tesla still does what it does. Let's watch the video clip. So I'm sorry, it's in Korea. What he says is that, uh, uh, like a uh, Huang uh, drove the Tesla, he didn't find the uh, stolen truck and then just went to the truck and then collect, uh, crashed it. And then on the left hand side, this is how the accident happened. There is exploration why this happens. And then I'd like to come back to this issue later to see if we can find a resolution for this matter. Now, when you see this right here, then I start talking about our radar. Radar is an acronym of the radio detection and the range. Sometimes people get confused with the LIDAR. Basically, LIDAR uses uh, laser beams, and radar uses microwave. I know microwave means uh, you know, kind of jargon for some people. Then let me explain. 
In the Bible, uh, Genesis chapter 1, God said, there is a light. Yeah? And then there will be light. So this is kind of like a wave. And then uh, you have a wavelength, and then bound by the frequency. Frequency is a, divided. Frequency is a, a, a formula, a light speed divided by wavelength. And then, as you know, the, from the red and then all the way to violet, you have a 400 terahertz of frequency all the way to 789 terahertz. That corresponds to the wavelength of a 70, 750 nanometer all the way to 780 nanometer. But there is more than just light. We need to talk about the electro electromagnetic spectrum. So in the nature, uh, we have an uh, electromagnetic spectrum starting from radio frequency all the way to gamma rays. So when you say talk about light, we usually talk about visible lights. So other than the microwave, they are used for that. For example, X-ray, you have an X-ray scan available to the hospital. You want to use your X-ray scanner to scan your body. And then in the visual light, you have a camera, everyday camera, to take a picture of it. And then you have an infrared camera, a solar map. So other than the uh, uh, visual light, you need the source to uh, illuminate the target and then get the reflection. Actually, the visible light also is a source, a big sun. <laughs> Since it's a so big, you don't think it's a, it's a source, but uh, actually there's a source. But what about the microwave? So microwave is between the infrared and the radio frequencies. Many zoom into the microwave. So microwave, the frequencies start from 300 megahertz all the way to 300 gigahertz. That's what we call microwave. And then, uh, correspondingly, the wavelength is uh, from one millimeter to one meter. Actually, the wavelength is one meter long. Uh, for example, uh, 2.45 gigahertz, there is usage for microwave. The big usage is the microwave mode. <laughs> That's what we use every day. And then, now people are talking about a millimeter wave. So a millimeter wave consists of the uh, frequency range of 30 gigahertz all the way to 300 gigahertz. It corresponds to one millimeter and then 10 millimeter uh, wavelengths. As you know, uh, the some 60 gigahertz ranges or the 28 gigahertz ranges are for 5G and the 5G communication. So microwave is basically uh, has a usage for microwave oven and the communication as well as the sensing. So when it comes to radar, we are using the millimeter wave. For the automotive radar, we use a 77 9 gigahertz all the way to 81 gigahertz. And then for the industrial application, we use a 60 gigahertz. The reason why we use a higher frequency is very important, because uh, we have, uh, the, more, the higher frequency, the easier to uh, create the images out of the uh, uh, microwave. I try to be a little bit pedantic. This is a, a kind of explanation of how the radar system works. So on top, you have a wave. We call it frequency modulated the continuous wave. The wave itself is a continuous wave, but as time goes on, the frequency changes, it increases. The source transmitter frequency, uh, uh, FM system will receive an to the target. And by analyzing the return the signal, you can have Range, velocity, angle, and the size, as well as the imaging. So in order to calculate these all five parameters, you need to run very sophisticated signal processing. Basically, you have to run four times of a Fourier transform to try to construct this kind of 3D data cube. That's it. This is the most difficult part of my presentation. <laughs> and then, actually, now I'm talking about after Tesla. Tesla claimed that he was the inventor of the radar in 1917. So he did an idea and all concept of primitive radar like a unit to detect the location and then the velocity of the object. But actually, the first inventor of the radar was uh, uh, Heinrich Hertz in 19. 
1886, followed by 1904, Horstmeyer. So Horstmeyer is considered to be the first inventor of the radar system, but he was unlucky. He wasn't that famous. Followed by 1917's claim of uh, uh, Tesla, and then 1922, Marconi, who's the inventor of radio. radio. Uh, he's a real successful, kind of a, a lucky inventor. And then, for well, uh, 1935 to 1940, there was a big usage of the military radar. Uh, let me talk about that way. Uh, before 1935, there was a rumor. Germany and then Japan, they were developing that way to kill the people in the remote. <laughs> so even, uh, 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 for example, like 1915, uh, there was a newspaper article, and then 1919, there was a Warsaw article about blowing out the balloon in the air use of, uh, of the microwave. So the British Air Ministry was so conscious about the you know, Germans' uh, invention of the best way. So they encouraged their people to come up with a similar idea. So they even put the uh, 1,000 pounds of the price to those whoever uh, uh, makes this best way. But nobody had to do that. I mean, nobody had to claim it so far. So and I don't know if there's a student or 1,000 pounds is there or not. But if you are capable, you can apply. <laughs> and then, there, is a, there are two people, uh, Wilkins and the Watson Watt. Watt is a very famous guy, a little later. And then, instead of you know, developing this best way, they propose a new idea of using radio waves to detect the speed and the location of the incoming aircraft from the you know, uh, continent to, uh, to cross the global uh, channel. This is the real, is the beginning of the radar. Let me tell you. Uh, there was a, a project called the Chain Home Radar in, in, in Internet, uh, early 1940s, actually, 1939 and 1940. Alongside the seaside, they put the uh, tower, like uh, the one shown in the picture, and then try to uh, monitor the incoming uh, aircraft location and speed. But unfortunately, uh, during the bombing, uh, the German aircraft, they outnumbered the British aircraft by three to two one. So instead of you know, having a direct contact, they use radar to detect the exact location of the German aircraft, and then attack the German aircraft from the, uh, the sky above. It's like a, you know, a, you know, a vertical bound to attack the uh, German aircraft, uh, aircraft. So with the use of this radar system alongside the uh, sea, they were able to overcome the deficiency between the uh, number of German uh, aircraft and then the British aircraft. So this was a successful story and they called it as a, a battle of Britain in the history book. So this is a first use of radar system to defend the country. And then I told you uh, what is a thing one famous last name. So like a grandfather, like grandson, not like a grand, like father, like son, like a grandfather, like son. Watt is a uh, grandson of James Watt, who is the inventor of a uh, steam engine, and then he invented the uh, uh, chain on system. So likewise, <laughs> Mark Hans, the grandfather, was a big contributor to uh, the original university, like uh, uh, his grandfather, but his son is a big uh, contributor to the original university at the Sri campus. <laughs> And then uh, there is a failure. In 1941, uh, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. Actually, Pearl Harbor had also a radar system called the SCR 270. And then in the morning of 1941, the radar system detected the incoming aircraft. So in the, this is the actual radar screen. On your left hand side, there is a block which shows you have an incoming aircraft. The problem is, 
the radar operator didn't know what the aircraft was. He reported to the uh, higher ranking officer. The higher ranking officer even didn't know because he was not trained well. So you were thinking, in the morning, there was a scheduled arrival of the uh, B-17 from the mainland. So this must be the, uh, uh, our you know, uh, flight in incoming aircraft. But in reality, there was a, a Japanese as I was saying. Then, this is a one example of sensing, well, but not really understanding the result of the sensing. So, if you uh, study the history, uh, can you guess what happened to the higher officer who did you give a green light to stop or give an early warning of this uh, incoming aircraft? He was sentenced to no beat. <laughs> Because nobody trained him, nobody showed him how to identify the radar signal to uh, kind of match them with the actual airplane. So that was the problem of having just the sensing. So this is uh, our radar system. We are developing this radar. No, actually, this is. <laughs> <laughs> So with the introduction of the CEOs in the radar, not like the traditional heavy duty long range radar, we are developing very small everyday radar system. So our radar uh, product line consists of uh, image radars, which I'm going to explain to you later, combined with a non-image radar, like a traditional radar. So the problem of having traditional radar is this. Like a, uh, the incident happened in the Pearl Harbor, even though the radar is able to detect the object. It may not know what the real object is. For example, this is the scene. We use our radar to detect the garbage can in the United States. So in the next year, you're going to see our radar system uh, behind the high truck in the United States. And then other you know, uh, uh, video clips show that even though we are able to detect the object from this scene, you may not know what the object is really like. So what you know is that there must be something, and then you need to do some action, but you don't know what you should do, right? That's the kind of uh, uh, limit of uh, uh, having a uh, uh, traditional radar system. So now let me switch to sensibility portion of the Jane example. Sensibility is the ability to experience and understand the deep feelings, especially in our generation. It's more like kind of an emotional thing. And then uh, we have a, a kind of a way to make accessibility as a, a possibility. So this is a kind of an evolution of the radar system. So starting from 2014 all the way to 2030, so in order to go beyond level four over autonomous driving, you definitely need a 3D detection. That means imaging capability of the radar system. It, this is what the uh, report is saying. And then there is a horse race in the 4D image radar. On the right hand side, starting from 2012, there are many companies in the world, in the United States, Israel, one in Korea, smart radar system, to do in the horse race in the image radar. So we were founded in 2017, so at the top of the, uh, uh, the screen. But fortunately, according to the uh, research paper uh, published by the uh, French uh, research company called Your Development of the last year, somehow we are, smart weather system, is a leader in the whole race. So even though we are very small, located in Korea, we are competing with all the companies in the worldwide and then still considered to be the, uh, one of the leaders in the image radar. So this is how we developed our image radar system. So basically, we are combining both analog uh, design and then digital design technology together. So we have a very advanced non-uniform antenna array combined with the digital signal processing. Remember, I have to, you know, a couple of uh, uh, slides back. I was talking about very complex uh, signal processing. That signal processing algorithm was developed by us internally. 
to create all the user data platforms so that from the 3, 3D point cloud, now you get the whole image. So not like a traditional way that you only have dots. From today, you will have an image of the object. So this is it. This is <laughs> one of our engineers. I asked him to create this, and then uh, he was uh, uh, glad to accept the role and then created this uh, uh, 3D only uh, point cloud. So basically, uh, uh, this is a poly uh, point cloud, and then uh, poly means x, y, z plus the velocity. Now we have uh, all three dimensional combined with the velocity information. Looks great, and then it looks uh, very colorful. It looks like uh, we are doing something. But what we are going to do? What am I going to do with this? <laughs> I mean, for some people, yeah, it looks good. For some people, no, I cannot really say this is a human or this is an uh, animal or anything. What are we going to do? Now we have to put the sensibility part of our uh, product. So this is how we do. So right now, meet the deep learning. So deep learning is the enabler for us to give us a sensibility portion of the sensor sensibility to our image radar. So uh, this is how we run the deep learning algorithm. First, you collect all the kind of data from the internet, standing still or you know, lying down. And then, like a previous slide, you generate a point cloud. Still, the point cloud doesn't mean anything. So we have to have some kind of pre-processing to make it more reasonable point cloud. That's what we call feature selection combined with the normalization. Then you start going with the famous deep uh, learning algorithm to categorize the function of the object. So this is how we give a life to our point cloud to have a more meaning out of it. So let me show you this. Without deep learning algorithm, you know, decision process to see the person is standing or sitting takes a long time. So with the deep learning, it's, it's spontaneous because deep learning is running on our system as a embedded system. Then, uh, for example, uh, there, are, there are many corner cases on your left hand side. Uh, there's a corner case where the person is standing right next to the wall. The system gets confused if the standing or sitting. But with the deep learning, you don't get really any issues. He exactly knows what the person is doing. So, this is the beauty of deep learning against the uh, image radar. Then this is uh, also the uh, abnormal postures that the people, you know, it's not easy to decide which posture they are. So if we train the system with the money, now you will completely know. For example, on your right hand side, even the person was lying, the system so think that uh, she was silly. But no problem with the money algorithm. Again, this is uh, how we did a life to our uh, image radar to make it more sensible. Now, beyond just the same thing, uh, we implemented our algorithm to do fall detection. This will be very useful for Dr. Hans' uh, parents. <laughs> I know they are very senior. Sometimes they have to fall down. You know what is there. You need to have a radar system without hurting their privacy to detect their behaviors. So, Instead of using camera system, which will violate your privacy, we can now use our image radar combined with the deep learning to give you a more meaning of the uh, fall detection. So on the left and most side, the person was lying down on the bed, and then somehow he fell down in the water. The system said that it, 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 it is definitely a fall down. And then the middle, uh, Practice makes for practice, but uh, I think I have this only. Can you connect the middle one? Middle one, yeah. Middle one. Yeah, okay. So the person is uh, making a normal movement, even though it's lying down, it doesn't qualify as a fall down. It's just considered as a normal action. But somehow the person makes uh, some abrupt movement, and system will know that that's a fall down. 
So can you imagine how many times he practiced that? So he broke the leg. <laughs> the third one, can you click the third one? So this is a kind of a, a everyday situation. Person was walking and then slowly in the line down. It's a normal action. And then what if the person abruptly falls down and the system should be able to detect this thing as a fall down. So this is a kind of a beauty of our own thing. So you can combine it with our things later. Okay, uh, now since we are under COVID-19, our partners in the United States asked us to create this video to see if our video can detect uh, less than two meter separation. <laughs> so without using camera, they are approaching too close, so we can give a warning out of there. So, uh, I mean, basically, uh, with a dynamic enabled image radar, can do whatever the camera does, even though the point cloud doesn't look like a real image. So this is a kind of a, a beauty. And then, lastly, we implement the retina uh, the squat trainer. So if you do some kind of movements, then we can count the number of squats that you did based on the, our uh, image radar. <laughs> So, now let's get back to the Tesla. So, uh, previously I played a video clip which is Tesla ran into the stove truck and then questioned the truck. Can you really prevent that from happening? And can you make Tesla to see the stove the truck? According to our theory, yes. And then that's how we're going to approach to Tesla <laughs> sometime uh, in the second half of this year. That's what's a video clip uh, created by us and then the Seoul National University combined with me to show the, the capability of the radar system with the autonomous driving. Hello, we are Smart Radar System. We are currently working on autonomous driving experiments independently with our own Fuji and his radar products. Here is Tess's video with our Frisian image radar named Lemna mounted in front of Tess's vehicle to analyze raw data around the vehicle. As you can see, we were able to gather crystal clear data in the environment, only using our radar sensor. Our Frisian image radar requires sophisticated technologies to improve from traditional radars that face detection and do image based detection with X, Y, Z coordinates. So let me pause it and then explain what it really means. So color in this video means the height of the object. Red means the object the height is uh, higher than five meters. Green and uh, blue means that the object is uh, smaller than five meters. The reason why Tesla was not able to detect the stored vehicle is that if you enable the radar to detect the uh, you know, uh, start uh, object every time. Tesla detects the breach, over bridge. Tesla has to start it because it doesn't know if it's a five meter higher or the smaller than the uh, less than the five meters. But with our image radar, now we have extra information that the bridge is actually taller than five meters. So it's safe for you to pass it. So that's one information. And then another one is uh, if you look at the, uh, this video, there's a continuous side of the uh, Blue light. That's a actually. Hmm. Hello, we are Smart Radar System. We are currently working on autonomous driving experiments. Changing height, velocity, and density of detected object is critical for autonomous driving to understand the surroundings. This Smart Radar System will keep on developing these technologies and will continue to impress the global audience. So the problem is, even though we work hard, radar is safe for long time to get all the information. We definitely need the head from the autonomous vehicle, especially the camera side. So we are working with the Seoul National University. Therefore, the next one and a half years to do real life tests and to collect the data, and then to collect the information collected by the radar system with the use of the camera system. So that's how we can evolve our radar system uh, down the road. 
So, uh, so far, I talked about the automotive application, but with the imaging capability, like the Sony developed the CMOS uh, sensor for the camera. Now, microwave vision system has many applications, including weapon detection, office, drone, and then all other smart factory. For example, like delivery robots, now you do need a kind of a radar system to navigate. So these are the applications, and then we do that, so we are going after the worldwide market. Unfortunately, I cannot name the, all the customers because we are still under NDA, but trust me, we are working with globally known companies worldwide. And then uh, here is a, one example. Uh, this is a one big use of the uh, uh, application in drone. So first, of all, watch the video. Now, now, you can hear the power. So what do you mean now? So this is a, a video uh, with our easy radar on the drone to detect another drone in the air and then affect the other to action. The problem of using the camera system, sometimes it gets blinded by the sunlight or sometimes get hit because of the you know, cloud things. So uh, with our easy radar, we can overcome the limit of the camera system. That was for the drone itself, but Think about in the future, what about the urban air mobility? What if drone flies? How are you going to guarantee the drone goes in the right lane? How are you going to create a virtual lane in the sky? That's where you do need our radar system to create a virtual lane. That's the vision I have. Yeah. It's not just a single radar for the drone itself. We need to create a virtual road in the sky with our image radars. Pretty big, right? Okay, Professor Wang, and then we have our ultimate uh, mission. Uh, as like a Dr. Kim, I spent my career in, uh, in Silicon Valley. Uh, in 1957, there was a company called Fairchild. I know out of Fairchild, there are so many people, so many companies are from the Fairchild. Now they are called Fairchildren. It's like a, they have a horizon to kind of a, a, a expansion. And then in Late 1990s or 20, 2000, PayPal, and then out of PayPal, there are so many good companies came out. So this is a kind of like model. So without you know, making our you know, smart radar system as a successful company, we have a much bigger uh, vision or mission to raise our young leaders to be the next innovation so that we can have a, I know, uh, Ilan Kim or whatever. <laughs> so many innovators should come out of this Seoul Regional University with our uh, collaboration. No, achieving this kind of goal is not easy. So we have to go through failure to failure, and then sometimes we want to give up, but we, we should never give up, like a like, uh, uh, Eastern Church said. So this is uh, how we can make our dream come true, and then Make it a supreme as an example, kind of a committee for the entire Korean society and the worldwide community. Thank you for listening to my great presentation. <laughs> Should I take a question? Yeah, we have a, a couple of minutes in the yeah. session, so probably I think I'll answer my questions. Any questions will be welcome. Yeah, I guess my presentation was a little clearer. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you have been speaking about uh, beyond detection. So I have uh, a simple question. Uh, uh, as far as I know, the uh, imagine companies will be uh, able to collect uh, so many data and public information. Uh, how difficult do you think? Uh, these companies, especially SRS uh, and the other companies that make it of sensors uh, uh, to comply with uh, uh, data protection uh, mechanism. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a very difficult question, especially in European countries. It's a, a, a must, and then uh, of 
unfortunately, as a startup, we haven't done uh, any implementation of data protection yet. That's our homework for the next stage. We are really busy developing the product and the algorithm itself. Unfortunately, we haven't paid any attention to the data protection yet, but we are aware of that uh, importance of our data protection. How come first question is the most difficult one? <laughs> Okay, yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you for your great presentation. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm, uh, I was really impressed at the last, and uh, I would like to ask you about your uh, mission and the vision of your company. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, uh, actually, CTO is my brother, and then we have uh, uh, many kind of uh, people who share the vision together. And then as we are uh, old enough, we are not making this company for our own goods. We try to make this company as a kind of a platform like a PayPal or the uh, Fairchild to make a more kind of horizontal uh, effect on of action, or effect on the young leaders. So we try to raise and train the young leaders to the next leader of the, uh, another innovative companies. For example, uh, uh, we have a couple of people who used to be uh, running their own company, and then we told them, uh, you guys stay here a couple of years, and then at, at the, uh, when the time comes on, you're going to let go to kind of the Silicon Valley and then create your own company, but you may not have enough money, then we can fund it, and then through our uh, kind of relationship with the worldwide companies, we can give you kind of initial access to uh, uh, great companies. That's how you can make them successful the, from the beginning, and then from the beginning, they can go uh, worldwide without being trapped in Korea. You know. That is kind of our reason. We are almost on time, uh, but I have actually also 60 people online, YouTube, and also your question from Nigeria. Okay. Uh, he's uh, Dr. Patrick Oguma, he's also our alumni from the Federal Ministry of Communication and Digital Economy Amsa. And so he was asking first you know, that whether your slide can be actually uh, you know, open to the public, you know, for his colleague member or not, you know, so. Yes, I'm gonna uh, edit it a little bit, especially on the last slide, which has a military portion, military portion, so far, and then after editing, I'm gonna show uh, that slide to you guys. Okay, and second one, it says, there were also another invitation for your actual technology mm -hmm. to be presented to the you know to the Ministry of you know, Federal Communication mm -hmm. in this economy in Nigeria, which oh. is the, the largest uh, uh, the, the country mm -hmm. in uh, Africa. Mm -hmm. So what was it? I really that you're welcoming into the invitation, yeah. right? By yeah, okay, yeah. but uh, because of this COVID nineteen. Maybe on <laughs> later. Maybe on right. 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 I think this will be for yeah, the special okay, audience. Okay. Yeah, special audience. So we'll coordinate not only you know, from this stream and seminar, mm -hmm. so additional probably you know, next seminar for the specialized audience in you know, a worldwide, okay. like the Ministry of Communication. Okay, and I think you know, we'll relate that to you, you know, by your approval. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I guess that's it, right? Uh, yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your inspiring presentation. From now on, we'll have a small break. Here's an important announcement. During the short break, there will be a special performance directed by Professor Singh Kim and performed with his, um, by his students in College of Music of SNU. The performance starts 10 minutes later on second floor, so our staff will guide you to the venue. We'll continue our program in the next uh, 40 minutes. Uh, please come into this venue before 4.50. And the refreshment you know, station are located in the lobby. Please enjoy great performance and the refreshment.